<clears throat> okay, and welcome back to Banner Saga. So, if you watched my last episode, episode 6 of Banner Saga, you will notice that I have backtracked. And the reason for my backtracking is very, very frustrating. I lost about, what is it, let's see, eight, about 16 episodes worth of content. All the way up to fucking Banner Saga 2. Um, I had gotten eight episodes into Banner Saga 2 before I realized that the setting I had for my headphones was all audio to my headphones. That is including game audio. So the game audio was not going to my recording. So it was just my voice. No sounds, no music, nothing. So I am back all the way back here to re-record the episodes. And if I sound frustrated, it's because I am. That was over 24 hours of video. Completely fucking useless video. Before I realized how badly I had fucked up. And boy howdy did I ever fuck up. So. If some things seem different, it's because I made different choices, because I knew the effects of those choices. <sighs> so, we are here at the tower. Um, yeah, I'm quite pissed. I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite angered. So, I will be making different choices. I will not be killing Ludwig. Um, like before, but I will catch you back up to where we are, or, uh, you know what, we'll just continue with this episode like the last one never happened, because that's the kind of person I am, because this is completely different, um, with the choices that I have made. So, uh, let's continue. Okay. That's what I thought. Oop. He got dead. Where do y'all think you're going, huh? Shit. Really? Really? I'm not gonna have the chance to attack because there's so few of them. They're gonna be able to attack like every fucking turn. It's kind of bullshit, you know? Yeah, see what I mean? It's it's horseshit. What the fuck was that? Are you serious? Go eat a dick, you fucking asshole. Down comes his health. Well, that was dog shit. And a boopity boop. And suck my balls. And we're not gonna impale. 
His health is all the way down. I was about to say, you ain't going over, motherfucker. There we go. Really? That was dog shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Fucking piece of shit, motherfucker. Fucking murder your family. In fact, that's exactly what I'm doing. Murdering your family. gonna rest. Sound good? <laughs> gotcha. You lean on a crumpled wall watching endless waves of dredge marching below. Satisfied, Hagon? Mogger asks. A va the vast number of dredge remind you of the Great Wars. I've seen enough, you reply. Let's get out of here. Mogger stands over the bodies of a man and a woman. Think the slag came up here for these two? Asks Mogger, waving his bloodied weapon in their direction. Why would anyone be here? No clue, says Mogger. <clears throat> You're definitely not dressed for it. Something wrong about all this. The girl is definitely dead, but a frown crosses his face as he bends an ear to the man's chest. This one's still breathing. The clang of metal reaches you from the courtyard. Muffled by the thick snow, you curse. Quick, back down. Bring the live one. You skip stairs as you descend, shouting orders to the bar below. We're gonna charge! Rush into battle. That was smart. Gotcha. Teehee. Well, fuck. Can't do shit now, can you, buddy? Well, how about fuck a do to you? Gotcha. Bitch. I broke your armor, bitch. Gotcha. And this bitch is dead. Super dead. And we're gonna pull back because uh, we aren't gonna be able to win another fight like that.
What's going on? I had one eye on the fight. Next time I looked down, Dredge were, were swarming into the courtyard. <clears throat> Can't tell how many more are waiting out there. Ugh. But it's a lot. If we if we're getting back across the bridge, it'll be a fight. Any options? Not really, unless you want to wait into the valley we're going to have to leave the same way we came in. Hey, Gon, I think you should take a look at this. Nearby, a man had been bundled and laid near a short wall protected from the wind. I think this man is a mender. That raises more questions than it answers. That's right, I knew his look was familiar. The Spellweavers in Ridgehorn? Why? Maybe they knew something about what's happening. If he's going to tell us anything, we need to get out of here alive. Let's go. Hold on, we've got a lot of tired and mooded, Hakon. This is going to be rough. Each day we wait means more dredge, or another ambush, or we get snowed in. A heavy snow may act in our favor if we can get past the first line of dredge and lose the rest. I agree for once. I don't have any intention of staying here. Er, look. It's your call, Hakon, but we can't cut and run on this one. There's w one way out. <clears throat> if Varl fall, if anyone falls fighting here, they'll be left behind. <clears throat> okay, we wait for now. Let's make this place defensible. Luton's face becomes a singular deep scowl. That's the worth of my opinion, isn't it? You already had... You already decided what you were going to do. Any opportunity to insult me. I'm leaving. Freezing to death in the tomb, if you like. Um, knock him out. Even though he sees it coming, there's not much he can do to stop you. the pummeling from happening. With a single open palm across the face, he falls forward, flattened. Damn it, Hakon, this won't make things any easier. Now we've got two unconscious bodies to carry out of here. <coughs> Tie him up. I don't want to see or hear him again until we get to Garothheim. Should I assume we're staying for now? Only until we're ready to fight. Alright, I'll spread the word and meet you back here soon. We'll set up watch, says Mulgar. Who knows what Dredge might do in the meantime. Might try to starve us out and wear us down. Might try to hide their numbers. What do you want to do? God damn it. Focus on getting everybody rested. Will do, he says. When you're ready to leave, give the word. Until then, I'll see it that everybody's fine condition to escape. Okay, we'll take one day of rest. We're ready. What's our approach? Bait the dredge into attacking and wear them down. Sounds like the right option. <coughs> ah! Right. If we can get enough of them to split off, we can handle them a lot easier. Might be worth a try. We're doing it. You send the Varl forward to harass the dredge. A couple come down to engage and are quickly felled, toppling over the cliff. No more take the bait. Instead, hurling exploding stones at warriors. You'll have to change your tactics. Charge, do it. Rushing forward with others and draw your weapons. The dredge are spoiling for a fight. I'm sure they are. Okay, so fuckface is gone, so... We'll put you over here. Back.
Suck a dick. Got him. So annoying. With the first raid of Dredge out of the picture, you stop and take stock of the battlefield. Your warriors are doing well, as well as you could hope. Fortunately, there were enough of them to pull it off. The Dredge are furious, but falling quickly. You think you could safely outdistance them at this point. You're almost free. What do you do? You're almost free of this nightmare. What do you do? Get out of here. You take stock of the survivors. It hurts to think of how many you lost this far. But nothing but an unconscious mender to show for it. You hope it was worth it. I think it is. But I know what happened, so... Whatever. Let's go. Oh, man, that was my knee. kind of weird to think he went all the way there with nothing to show after we got stopped like 10 times in like one quarter of that amount of time so I find that very unconvincing to say the least Akon join me for a moment there's something I thought you would want to see is it a welcome welcoming party from Grafheim bearing mead that's about the only thing I want to see no such luck. The mender from Ridgehorn woke up. He says his name is Avon. Sounds like a mender name. How is he? Not well. Where are we? A day or two from Grafheim. We found you at the Tower of Ridgehorn. What were you doing there? Grafheim? No, no, no. That's the wrong way. Juno, where is she? Where is the woman who was with me? She didn't make it, my friend. We only brought the living with us. No, we have to go back. I don't think so. We barely made it out two weeks ago. Do you know why the dredge were crawling all over Ridgehorn? Dredge, we have to go back! It's a damn graveyard, boy. I'm sorry, Avon. The girl was dead when we got there. What we have to do is tell Jerunder what's happening and prepare for a bloody war. So if you... She's dead. I couldn't save her. I couldn't save her. Avon suddenly looks spent. He slips to the ground and you motion 
for some varl to help him onto the cart. Not what I'd hoped to hear, and not sure if I was hoping. Come on, Ubin. The sooner we get to Grafheim, the better. Dread grips me as we approach Grofheim. None of us expected to see a city unscathed. But what we find steals the very breath from my lungs. Okay. What did I tell you, Rook? The man with the crazed look about him. He stands, axe pointed in your direction. On the other side of a dozen men. Echo, you son of a bitch. Remember what I said? Think carefully about what you want. This is what you get. Echo walks away, leaving you to deal with the thugs. Really? I thought I agreed with him last time. Ready for battle. Fuck them up. Fuck. Beat their fucking asses. Didn't work. Oh, well that works, I guess. Go, go and trigger me. 
Trick me. Trick me. Trick me. Trick me. Got him. That didn't fucking work, did it? What? What? That's dog shit. Fuck you. Whoop. Got her. <sighs> Suck a pee pee. Damn, dude. Quit being a bitch. Boop. Gotcha. Boop. Gotcha. promoted. I thought there was one more. Oh well, fuck it. Ten renown, that's a decent amount. I can deal with that. Hate to admit it, Rook, but you're right. You can't stay here. If we're not murdering or sleep, it's only a matter of time before the dredge find their way in. There's nobody defending these walls. You spot Alette looking at one of these thugs. She cocks her head to the side. Uh, Dad, I think he's still alive. Ivor lifts him to his feet by the tunic. He groans from pain. This guy again? Why did Echo try it and kill us? He's a damn lunatic. Figure that yet? Why would Frostfiller's chieftain put a madman in charge of his guards? That what he told you? He never put Echo in charge. As soon as those gates were shut, Echo walked into the Great Hall and sliced open the chieftain like a narwhal. Saw it myself. Echo wasn't captain. Look at him. Enough of this. It's time to go. Where can we go? By now the dredge have already flooded the south, I'm sure. Wormtoe's the only thing that makes sense across the waste. I might know someone there who could help us. And the dredge probably won't follow us in, over into the wastes they didn't in the Great Wars. Because it's a death sentence, food's already running low. I know where Echo keeps the supplies, I'll tell you, if you take me with you. Shut that guy up. Wait! I'm not the only one. Get the supplies and there are plenty of fighters who are desperate to get out of here. Might solve a few problems. No deal. Shut him up and get out of here. Ivor punches him in the face. He crumbles. All right. We get to Wormtoe. We find the Varl who won't try and kill us. We find safety. Gather everybody up, and we'll make a break for it. Uh, yeah, that'll have to wait. Whoa, whoa, where did all my supplies go? That's fucking horse shit. I had like fucking 
16 days worth of supplies. Fucking assholes, I swear to God. Fuck it. it. Looks like that's all the leveling up that's gonna happen. Outside the walls, things are a mess. Dredge are everywhere. Fortunately, they're going around the hill on which Frostfiller sits, heading south. And show little interest in following, a, following as you cross in the waste. You're finally free of Frostfiller, but find yourself facing a new problem. You hope that whoever Ivor knows in Wormtoes is willing to help. That was dumb. The caravan consists of more clansmen than you ever expected. Accusations of stolen chicken, missing heirlooms, and concerns over daughter's virtues are the sort of things you hear relentlessly. Even fighters complain about the spreading too thin to protect everywhere, everyone. Trying to keep it, people useful and too busy for petty squabbles. Firewood collecting, scouting, gathering of edibles, weapon training, and wagon repair keep your clansmen busy and usually too tired to complain. The chores slow the caravan, but resulting peace and productivity feels worth it. Fuck yes. You find a surprising number of people camped out at the Godstone. They've been here for quite a while, ever since the sun stopped. Apparently they think Radimir, the sun god, has come back and they're worshipping him despite the bleak environment. They welcome the caravan, mingling and swapping stories with the others while you rest. They have almost nothing of value to trade, but their leader approaches you and offers to join, let you join in their tribute. Um, accept their offer. Bravely, you give an offer of chance. When you apply the oil to your skin, it starts to burn like a hot brand, but you bear it. It doesn't reveal any secrets of the universe, but the worshippers is impressed by your courage and gift you with more oil to take. Move on. You make your excuses and are soon back on the road, somewhat relieved that the worshippers show no interest in joining you. Oh! Okay. 
several people noticed black vultures circling above the caravan, taking advantage of the late snowfall. They pose no threat, but they have visibly visible impact on the mood of your clansmen. The next time you look back, Odleaf is firing arrows into the air, which nearly tags a bird once or twice. Get lost. No dead down here, she shouts. Join her in shooting the vultures. First person to knock one out of the sky gets their wish granted. You announce several people of the caravan give it a try, including Alette. Enjoying the sport, turning around morale, it's no big surprise when one of Odleaf's blue feathered arrows brings down a bird. You know, says Odilif, scanning the caravan, a lot of the, these women, they could do this. You can tell from the look in her eyes, she's excited by the idea. I think I'm going to start training them on how to fight. Encourage Odilif how to train women. It's always a good choice. We can always use more fighters, you tell Odilif. Oh, Odif, Odif. I, I think I've been adding an L to her name. Accidentally. <laughs> I'm a fucking retard. If Alette is any proof, you know how to train someone with someone with a bow. Oh, do you f oh. No! What the fuck? I have been pronouncing it, well, saying it right with the L. Why does, is that a typo? That's bothering me. <laughs> oh, Leaf gives you a smile. She heads off to some women in the caravan, showing them the vultures she shot down. Sweet. Still got eight days worth of supplies, so we should be good. Hopefully. Someone's been nicking extra goods from the supplies, a concerned woman tells you. Counted these myself yesterday. No mistake, this keeps up. We'll be starving before long. Post a few extra guards to watch the supplies. To deter any theft, you discreetly place some of your trusted guards by the caravan. You hear a few people casually point out the extra manpower, but nobody seems to raise the alarm for now. About through the wastes. The trail of blood leads to a large clearing where you find a large wounded varl. He's gnawing on his shield, swearing at no one in particular, and occasionally slamming his crudgel to the ground. If not for the heavy bleeding, you'd leave this one alone without a second thought. You food and medicine. You fill a basket with food. Needle and thread and a few poultices. The varl growls as you place the basket close to him and walk away. The next day, the giant catches up to your caravan and says, I will fight for you. His eyes are clear and determined. Sweet. Made the good choice. Wormtow was never the kind of place someone would build a town. Fittingly, the var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. That's weird. I'm wondering why Eckle did not join you. It's kind of odd. The Varl find you before you see them, not surprising with this many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know why you're here, but back down when Ivor tells them he's here to see a man named Kummer. Kummer! Kummer, Kummer, Kummer. Well, I'll be damned. Kummer, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what brings you to Yingvar? To Wormtoe with his very own village of humans. Bad news, dredge are coming down from the north. We barely made it this far. That is dire news. Come on, we have food. We'll discuss more in the meat house. As you follow the old Varl into their meager town, you catch him quietly saying, if it were anyone else, I've talked with the warriors here. I'll be honest with you. Half want to go north and find out what happened at Blotzbalkler. 
Some think we should go to Graufheim instead. None of us are happy you're here. What do you think? If I had it my way, I'd stay here and let their dredge come. But you made this a problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long, even if they don't eat much. This is a far old town. Most of us take care of ourselves. You've got women and children. We could pitch in, make this place livable. It doesn't work like that. These Varl are here to get away from civilization, not make one. It's Crummer's call. It won't be long before the dredger here, too. No, it won't. If there's one thing we should do, it's tell Jerunder what's going on. Who's Jerunder? Varl King. Well, as close to one as we have. Yngvar, where'd you find these people? Stay here and rest, but once yours are ready to go, we do. I'm going to see off those who want to head north. I'll... But I'll join you to Grafheim. More travel? No, we've already come so far. Stop pouting, girly. Even if Jerunder would, won't listen to a tired old Varl like me, I have a feeling they'll pay attention to you, your friend Yingvar here. They'll listen to Ivor? Huh. He hasn't told you, of course he hasn't. Do what you need to do, but don't be long. Okay, that will do it here for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you join me for the next one as well. I'll see you.